Hey folks, Joseph Sabora here. As I previously reviewed Dr. Seuss, How the Grinch Stole Christmas, yeah, I'm wearing this lovely t-shirt and the pajamas. <laughs> um, I do forgot a few things I'd like to mention. I love the scene where the Grinch suddenly goes all the way down into the chimney and he's having trouble, you know, trying to go all the way down because he is very big, so he did. All the stuff that he was stealing to put in into those bags like a roll of film these ice cubes which I know they're gonna melt and um, he also took half of the cheese from the mice <laughs> and all of that that was fun yeah with Boris Koloff the legendary voice uh, with Boris Koloff, who's been known for doing all these Frankenstein films and other horror films, and providing the voice of the Grinch. And he's also the narrator. We also got uh, June Fourway to provide the voice of Sidney Lou. And we also have Max the Dog and the rest of the Who's from Whoville. So for a 25 minute short, as a special, it works because it's based on the book from 1957 written by Dr. Seuss himself whose real name is Ted Geisel and of course he was also married to his wife Audrey he's now a widower ever since um, he died in 1991 and this is where we're going to lead to the live action film adaptation that came out on November 8th and as a uh, premiere and then later it was given a wide release on November 17, 2000 and that is the movie with Jim Carrey portraying the role as the Grinch or in some cases, Dr. Seuss, How the Grinch Stole Christmas, from 2000. <laughs> yeah. And this is the 2009 Blu-ray release that I picked up back in 2012. Yeah, I got this uh, during Black Friday, a long time ago. They later re-released this um, with a 4K remaster, so it was upgraded and has a nice transfer to the, um, the later release because the previous release um, was quite decent in my opinion I don't think the transfer wasn't that bad if you ask me this is exactly how the movie looked when it came out in feeders so it always has this hazy look and it has grain in it which I don't mind it has all the has the the dark atmosphere and all this uh, tilt the camera shots and all that stuff that's put into it um, with a mix of um, practical effects and CGI in there I mean everything that's in there I don't know I mean it never looked any better so let's let's put it this way you're not expecting much uh, transfer wise I mean closer to be solid and the later release actually had a much solid uh, picture quality because I guess they used a different video encode that's MPEG-4 and I, and I think they use a 4K remaster to make it look better and I think the 4K uh, Ultra HD will look much better too so hey nobody's perfect right? and the audio quality sounds just as good and everything and does have all the features from the previous release on the deluxe edition on DVD that was released in 2002 even though the, the VHS and DVD were, were released in 2001 okay so as you can see on the back uh, I love this uh, green blu-ray case that they got it really suits it so well because after all the Grinch is green so there so it really matches and yes, it's a Blu-ray DVD combo pack, so it has the DVD right here in a uh, 
all in a uh, paper sleeve and here's the blu-ray so. and yeah Ron Howard directed this who also produced the film with Brian Grazier yeah whose production company is uh, Imagine Entertainment that yeah the same company that produced several films and of course from Universal Pictures now I always loved this movie ever since I saw this back in 2000 saw it in theaters with my family actually had a free movie pass um, which I'm going to tell you the story about that um, whenever um, like a supermarket such as uh, Ralph's for example whenever um, they ever have like a a family film that's coming out in theaters they always have a, a sweepstakes where if you buy tons of groceries you get a free movie ticket so you can see the movie that's playing in, in November or December well this is exactly where I saw the movie where I got a free movie pass and and I got to see it with my family uh, at my local theater I actually went to see it in AMC in Burbank uh, before they had the new theater that was being rebuilt across the street but it's, it was an old theater but it had a lot of um, a lot of screens like 14 screens and then and across the street it, it was there was a f eight screen in the mall and then another across in the north side of the, the location there was a feeder that has six screens yeah so it's AMC it's been that way ever since but now they have yeah, 30 screens <laughs> so it's a total of that since they added a 16 screen feeder but it also added some IMAX and all that okay well, whatever um, I always thought this was a fun movie it was hilarious um, there's a bit of um, a lot of heart to it. I mean, there's a lot of. I mean, it's a bit heartwarming, and and what you saw that was from the book was there, but it seemed like they wanted to go for a more extensive um, version of the film. So they're trying to become more extended, so we get like an extended backstory of of the Grinch and the rest of the Hoove the rest of the Who's um, from Whoville so we get to know all the characters and plus you get a soundtrack and you get a lot of uh, hilarious uh, dialogue and moments most of which were coming from Jim Carrey you know playing the role so at this rate this might as well just be a Jim Carrey movie <laughs> like any other but this movie got criticized by critics so it suddenly gets some polarizing reviews so some people love it some people hate it so it got mixed reviews and I'm sorry but I just think this movie deserved better than that I, I, I think people are just taking this movie way too seriously thinking that this is like Citizen Kane or at this rate they wanted to make this movie focus more on exactly like the holiday special from 1966 I understand that but why can't I love both at least I mean and this is before the new movie that came out recently by Illumination and even that film's getting criticized I mean I, I guess you know the Grinch never gets any love these days in recent years but they can get more love with the holiday special. If that's the case, then I guess the holiday, I guess the holiday special is is too overrated. <laughs> but okay, okay. But just to be fair, all right. I do love the holiday special. I love it for all my heart. I've watched this many times. But I just think this movie really deserves a chance, and that's the problem. Um. So, again, it's my opinion, so I'm going to keep it that way. Because it really deserves it. 
Um, there was also an extended cut for this movie, which I think they're supposed to have one, but never existed. Um, because actually there was a TV cut that has all the deleted scenes. So whatever you watch uh, this movie on TV, you'll actually get to see some deleted scenes that didn't quite make it into the film. It only had some deleted scenes on the Blu-ray and DVD, but not all of it. So, take your time. <laughs> so my suggestion, if you want to see all the deleted scenes, um, then watch it on TV. <laughs> Like, watch it on the NBC or ABC. Well, no longer on ABC, but... It was on ABC. And it was on ABC Family, which is now Freeform. So I guess NBC will be the right choice for it. <laughs> so, okay. But anyway, um, let's get to the review. It stars Jim Carrey as the Grinch <laughs> okay uh, Taylor Momsen yes Taylor Momsen who later became a singer this is actually her screen debut um, Jeffrey Tambor who's been in other stuff like heavyweights uh, as well as um, TV shows like um, Max Headroom uh, Freeze Company or The Ropers, The Larry Sanders Show, even The Arrest Development, and Hellboy, and Hellboy 2, The Golden Army. Yeah. Christine Berensky from uh, the TV show uh, Civil. Yeah, Civil Shepherd. That was a TV show from the 90s. Uh, but she's done other stuff. Uh, Bill Irwin. Uh, Molly Shannon, yes, Molly Shannon from Saturday Night Live. Yes, she was a former cast member, uh, but she was in films like Superstar and some others. Uh, Kelly as Max, the dog. Yeah, with Frank Welker providing the voice. Uh, Clint Howard, Ron Howard's brother. Uh, Mindy Sterling, uh, Jeremy Howard, T.J. Fine, Jim Meskimen, uh, <laughs> Caroline uh, Williams, yes, Caroline Williams, who's been best known for playing Stretch in the movie The Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. Yeah, she was one of the Who's in this movie. Uh, Bryce Dallas Howard, yes, Ron Howard's daughter, one of her earlier roles before she had a career. Uh, Mary Stein and Anthony Hopkins, who's the narrator of this movie. It's written by Jeffrey Price and Peter S. Seaman, which, interestingly enough, it actually had a uncredited uh, rewrite by the free writers of Seinfeld, yeah, Alec Bird, David Mandel, and Jeffrey Schoffer, which all three of those writers were later went on to write, you guessed it, the live action version of The Cat and Hat. And we all know how that turns out at the end. Yeah, but let's keep it this way. And it's directed by Ron Howard. The movie begins set where it starts with a tiny snowflake and as we get closer that's where we get to see the snow mountains of Mount Crumpet and we dive all the way deeper where we see and spotted the village of Whoville where all the Who's live as they're getting ready to celebrate Christmas and you know, going around Christmas shopping you know, getting all the gifts and decorate uh, all the Christmas lights around the house in the neighborhood. Also decorating the Christmas tree that's in the town of Whoville. So everyone is just gathering around and it also shows 
why the Who's really love Christmas so much. That is until we go all the way on top of the hill of Mount Crumpet, where we discover a misamphotic and egotistical creature known as the Grinch, who's played by Jim Carrey. Yeah, where he does all of his hilarious and crazy antics that he always does. Just like how he does in his movies. <laughs> but he's the only one that hates Christmas. And he even hates the Who's themselves. Which explains why no one likes the Grinch. Because of all the pranks that he's been pulling. All the vengeful and harmful stunts that he does to them. Everywhere they go. So that's why. He also has a dog named Max. And there's even a scene right there where the, the four teenagers, yeah, two boys, two girls, were going all the way on top just to discover the Grinch. But <laughs> a, a creature suddenly scares them off, which this was just part of a trick that the Grinch had pulled, which you just saw <laughs> Max just um, growling. <laughs> So as we spotted the Grinch, you know, with his devilish smile, he's going around collecting all the garbage that he, that the Who's just sent out, and this is where he eats an onion and all his vegetables. So yeah. <laughs> so anyway, that's where we meet six-year-old Cindy Lou Who, who's played by Taylor Momsen who believes that everyone is missing the point about Christmas, which the true meaning of Christmas is definitely about you know, relationships, love, family, great joy. So <clears throat> the rest is just focusing on gifts and festivities, you know, you know just celebrating and you know, having a good time. So he's with uh, his father, Lou, who's played by Bill Irwin. He also has a mother. And she also has a mother, <clears throat> who happens to be uh, Lou's wife, Betty Lou, who's played by Molly Shannon. So um, during um, just a few days before Christmas Eve and then later Christmas, they're just going around shopping, you know, sending all the gifts around. It's hard to believe that Sin Lou had to carry all these packages, <laughs> considering how small she is. She wants up having a face-to-face -face encounter with the Grinch, who was in disguise, you know, wearing a cloak and a Who mask. Yeah, because then, you know, the rest of the Whos were shocked that uh, the teenagers had spotted the Grinch. So. Anyway, at the post office, just when he was about to send out all these envelopes <laughs> and, you know, switching all the mail, you know, saying, Dirty Dewey, Judy Dewey, Dirty Dewey, <laughs> Black Mail, <laughs> Black Mail, Eviction Notice, Dirty Dewey, Judy Dewey, Judy Dewey. Yeah. He did spot it, uh, Cindy Lou, and that's where he just <laughs> greets him by. When Cindy Lou just says, You're the, 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 the Grinch! <laughs> so, she got trapped inside the machine where they're sending out all the packages all the way straight. So then, the Grinch at first started to leave her behind, but then Max just uh, forces uh, him to save her life, and that's what he did. Yeah. <laughs> um, but as a token of appreciation, he just wraps her up, you know, like a gift. You know, just before Lou arrives and actually thought that she actually wrapped herself up, you know, practicing all the gift wrapping. But, of course, you know, he wouldn't even believe in Cindy Lou's story. But there you go. Just have to keep it that way. But she thought to herself, well, maybe the Grinch isn't that bad after all. 
and this is where we lead to. He only becomes very interested in the history behind the Grinch, about his life. You know, how did how on earth did he hate Christmas so much? And why does he hate the Who's? Well, this is what answers the story. Yeah, even when she was singing the song, Where Are You Christmas? Yeah, which had a reprised version by country music singer Faith Hill. So she wants to know about um, his tragic past, you know, how it all began when the Grinch arrived in Whoville as a baby and was adopted by two Spencer sisters. Yeah, there's even a moment where, <laughs> yes, he says his first word, yeah, Santa, but just when they're about to give him some Christmas cookies, well, he ends up biting the, the Santa plate, and that's where he says, Santa, go bye-bye. <laughs> and as he grew up as a kid, he wants to go into school and develop a crush on Martha May, which of course is played by Christine Berensky, which, um, well, before we get to that particular story, um, and surprisingly a parody of, of Martha Stewart, she was actually decorating um, all the Christmas lights by using that uh, machine, so she doesn't have to go up on top with a, um, a ladder. Just like what Betty Lou was doing with with the help of Lou and Cindy Lou, helping out putting all the Christmas lights on top of the roof. The Grinch um, suddenly uh, had a crush on her because Martha just loves uh, the color green. But Augustus May became very jealous, and Augustus, of course, would later be played by Jeffrey Tambor which we now discover that he's, he's the mayor of Whoville and he also has an assistant named uh, Hubris who's played by Clint Howard anyway um, the Grants decided to make a Christmas gift for Marfa but since um, Augustus and his friends started making fun of him you know, saying that uh, he, he's very hairy. Well, this is what happens. Um, he suddenly uh, cuts himself shaving by using an electric shaver. Because, you know, we do cut ourselves shaving too. And we had, he had to put all these uh, toilet paper to cover all the, the scars. And the Christmas gift that he made was uh, something made out of uh, all these utensils and everything, you know, like forks, knives, and all these, uh, those uh, flippers and stuff, just to make a Christmas angel filled with all these gems put together. So this was going to be a beautiful gift for Marfa. So by the time he sent it to school, and this is where it gets really worse, um, he actually covers his head with a bag and it's just so he doesn't get embarrassed but the teacher just calls on him tell him to give him the gift and tells him to take off the bag of his head but then he has to cover himself by you know putting a big book then she tells him to put the book down and then he covers his face you know, with his foot and he tells put the foot down and this is where he shows his face, you know, with scars, covered with toilet paper, and, you know, Augustus and the rest of the kids started making fun of him. Even the teacher started to laugh at him, and this is where he got so furious that he decided to take the Christmas gift and just threw it straight into the presents, and also takes the entire Christmas tree and threw it out and started trashing everything throughout the entire classroom and ran away. Yeah, actually scaring off all the kids with Marfa just standing there just when she found her gift destroyed and she cried. Yeah, she had a tear in her eye. So she, 
Ever since this happened, he actually went all the way on top of the hill of Mount Crumpet, and this is where he yells, I hate Christmas! I hate it! So, just a terrible tragedy that this had to happen. And now he grew up, has a dog, Max, and that's how he's been doing ever since. So, touched by the story, Sidney Lou suddenly decided to nominate the Grinch to be in the Christmas Hubilation Holiday Cheermeister. It's a contest that's being the, supported by the mayor of Hoobill, of course, Augustus, and, and the rest of the people there. But Augustus did not want to invite him because this is where it's going to cause chaos, which he predicted. I mean, he even uh, took out the Book of Who's to say about uh, the message behind that. But, of course, he lied. Sidney Lou suddenly uh, tries to uh, tell him about the, the true, I mean, the true uh, meaning of the book right there, about what it really says. So then Sidney decided to uh, go up to Mount Kruppet to uh, talk to the Grinch to see if if it was okay for him to go all the way down to Whoville for the contest. But he kind of refused until he decided to um, you know, change his mind afterwards. You know, like at times he, you know, he do want to go or maybe not. I don't know. But of course, <laughs> you know, they started playing all the music and all the noise coming from down there. And, and he started singing right into his sleep. So he had to find something to wear. So by the time he finally um, changes his mind, he finally um, got to Whoville. So just to go for the contest because he also found out that there's an award that he's going to win for. But he thought that there might be a check included, but nope, no check was involved. So what did he have to do for the contest? Well, he has to wear the... Um, the Holiday Cheermeister uh, t-shirt, you know, just dress him up and you know, wearing a, a Christmas tree that lights up on the shirt. And he also wears a cap that might be a reef, yeah, a Christmas reef. So then he has to sit down onto um, the, the cheer chair. And this is where first he had to do the, the taste off of all the hoop pudding. <laughs> And then he has to go on a beanbag race. Yeah, he won for that. Yeah, that's where you hear the Chariots of Fire theme. And then he has to go to all these other tasks and you know, even try out all these brownies and everything until he finally um, wins the award. And when he got the award, it turns out to be, yes, you guessed it, the electric razor that he's been dealing with ever since... Uh, that tragedy that he suffered as a kid at school and <laughs> this and then on top of that um, Augustus proposed to uh, Marfa by actually uh, giving her a ring and of course the who car but the Grinch just scratches the car and just explains by berating the rest of the Who's that all the the gifts that they receive are going to end up in the garbage. Garbage, 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 garbage. And I think it's really stupid, 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 stupid. So then, what does he do? Well, he takes a mistletoe and just uh, <laughs> puts it into his butt and just wiggle around. And then, which causes Marfa the faint. And then he takes the electric shaver and just uh, shaved off Augustus' uh, head. So now he's looking all premature bald. Yeah, he, even his assistant decided to do the same thing. <laughs> which is even more funnier. Then he actually took um, a bottle of um, alcohol and decided to uh, burn down the entire Christmas tree. This very big, tall Christmas tree from Whoville, all the way down to <laughs> to the top of the star that fell off with the rest of the 
the ornaments. And then he takes a tiny car, <laughs> yes, with tiny hooves in there, and this is where he just drives off while everyone else is just running away from him, you know, cre creating all this uh, chaos that he's doing, and just drives off, and then he <laughs> and then suddenly, you know, knocks down everyone out. I mean, they were... <laughs> They almost got run over. I mean, one who actually got run over by a car, and then then the car suddenly <laughs> jumps up, and then until so he almost ran over the baby, and just and then he spins it around and around and around until he crashes. And this is where, well, there's a diehard moment. It's where he says, "It's gonna blow." He just runs up in slow motion, and then he jumps all the way high. <laughs> as the entire car explodes I mean, think about it a tiny car but big explosion <laughs> oh my god that was just hilarious but yes um, everything was destroyed but then he begins to learn that yes they did actually had a spare Christmas tree so they don't have to worry about that anymore <laughs> And they get to fix everything back to its place. <sighs> well, but by the time Christmas Eve starts, yep, this is your, this is where we get to where we expected from the book. Is when the Grinch decided to come up with a better scheme to actually stop Christmas from coming. Yes, so he has to create uh, a Santa suit. Yeah, with the help of Max, and up to the tune of, you guessed it, and he's sung by Jim Carrey himself. Um, you're a mean one, Mr. Grinch. You really are a heel. And so on. <laughs> I'm not going to sing the rest of it, but we already know that. Um... Interesting enough, uh, there was another version with um, Buster Rhymes joining in, so that's interesting. Um, so yes, he's just going around creating the suit, and there's even another scene where, you know, he was doing some testing by by dressing up as a crash test dummy. <laughs> yeah, and then he was he actually built his entire motor-powered uh, sleigh and he has everything all prepared up so that way he can go all the way down to Whoville and steal all Christmas so that way they could be sad and depressed <laughs> yeah so this is exactly what we're, we went for so when he powered up the the sleigh you know, with the help of Max joining in he went all the way down to Whoville, and this is where <laughs> he was going pretty fast. And then, yeah, this is a scene too. <laughs> We're all gonna die! We're all gonna die! And then just when his sleigh was spinning up, <laughs> upside down and forth, I'm gonna throw up, and then I'm gonna die! Mommy, tell it to stop! And then he got the sleigh under control, and then he says, Whew, I almost lost my cool there. <laughs> so then he finally went to the first stop of the house, and that's where, yep, it's the house where Cindy Lou lives. So he just goes around stealing everything throughout the entire house. You know, all the foods in, in the refrigerator even took the can of who hash all this traditional scenes as you may know already but I'm not gonna mention it he took the the yeah took the roast feast and just um, stuff it all in those bags so he took everything that's out of the house and even takes uh, <laughs> a mice instead of just taking half of the cheese there you go so then he goes door to door, you know, doing the same as usual. You know, stuffs up the tree up onto the chimney. As he already went inside, <laughs> down the chimney. 
Um, he also uh, grabs a saw, just cuts down the the entire uh, floor where the Christmas tree is, and it just goes all the way down. And then he takes a vacuum and starts to suck up all of the Christmas stockings, all the presents around, and also even suck up a <laughs> a, a goldfish which happened at Christmas Lou's house but also sucks up a cat <laughs> the cat suddenly goes up and just winds up attacking the Grinch uh, there's even another scene where the cat was on the cabinet in the kitchen <laughs> um, but yeah he just goes around sucking up all the the toys and presents and the Christmas tree everything so that's what he was doing and he, he actually loaded up into his sleigh. <laughs> yeah, with, with Max joining in, helping out, or maybe just doing all the work, but you get the idea. And then he decided to go all the way on top of the hill of Mount Krempit. And this is where he, he's actually stuck and begins to spot all the Whovilles trying to imagine to himself that yes they were all sad and depressed that that Christmas is stolen uh, there's even a moment too in the movie where <laughs> where he starts to uh, even though he did took uh, the Redding Wing from Marfa and just making all these uh, all these sarcastic uh, faces he also uh, started to pull a prank on Augustus by actually pretending that yeah because he's talking in the sleep he pretends that he was Marfa and starts to take Max and actually kisses him in the butt and that's where you see Max uh, his eyes uh, bulging <laughs> oh god poor dog <laughs> and, and then Augustus was smiling. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I know. I'm getting ahead of myself. So, so he was up there, but then he started to slip, and then all of a sudden his heart started to grow. It started beating as hard as it can, almost starting to look like he was going to get a heart attack but it's growing so he's suddenly a miracle was about to happen as he suddenly becomes stronger even though he suddenly has a change of parts but just when the 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 sleigh was about to slip by you know falling all almost falling down to the hill uh, Cindy Lou suddenly goes all the way up to the top and she wants up on top of the, the sleigh. Yeah, this this is the Grinch spotted. And now he wants up uh and you know, just trying to save her and everything, he just decides to grab the entire sleigh with his entire bare hands. So he, he grew very stronger. And then he just goes all the way down, you know, with Max. So they decided to drive all the way. <laughs> It's all the way down to to the hill until they finally went a a big stop, you know, trying to stop the brakes straight to the Christmas tree where Lou uh, stand by and just uh, and tell him to stop. Um, of course, uh, I also forgot to mention because I know I, I'm getting ahead of myself already. Uh, yes. Um, <laughs> There's a scene where the police just um, just uh, suddenly drives by, finding that there's a robbery going around, and and then you know the the rope suddenly uh, connects to uh, Augustus' bed, and and it just crashes all the way straight, and this is where everyone was shocked that you know that he was uh, he's already out of bed and. And this is where he says in his rant, 
Invite the Grinch, destroy Christmas. Invite the Grinch, destroy Christmas. And then he blames it on the Cindy Lou for, for all of this. But then Lou suddenly um, decided to stand up for her by telling that that Christmas is not about you know gifts and festivities and all that. It's about love and families and everyone together. And that's where you know he's he's beginning to find out about that. So. Of course, I mean, Cindy Lou is right. So just when everything um, works out for the best, I mean, now um, Martha decided to give the ring back to Augustus because he, she changed her mind and decided to fall in love with the Grinch instead. And now, um, well, <laughs> um, the Who's finally um, invites the Grinch and they actually got together and decided to Sing the song, Welcome Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> so, even trying to get the, the words right there. And then, the Grinch suddenly carves the feast, the first one to do so, and actually gives um, all the pieces to the rest of the Who's. Yeah, first with Cindy Lou, and he gives it to Max, and then decided to give it to everyone. And they actually had a wonderful Christmas. And really shows right there. And yes, I really love this movie. I don't care what anybody says. I mean, sure, it may not be as keen as the holiday special from 1966, yet alone the book. But still, it's entertaining, it's fun, it's hilarious, and I had a good time. Um, I thought Jim Carrey was excellent in the role of the Grinch. I mean, yeah, I, I would have had settled for other actors, like maybe Tim Curry uh, playing the role, and I'm surprised they didn't get him. But, of course, I guess he had to do Charlie's Angels. Go figure. But Jim Carrey definitely was the right choice at the time. And it just shows how how energetic he really was. I mean, he was very popular with all the films he was doing back in the 90s. I mean, he was a box office powerhouse. I mean, think about it. The Ace Ventura films, um, as well as Liar Liar, uh, Batman Forever, even, and um, The Truman Show, too. I mean, he was very big, very popular. And I thought he was um, entertaining to watch. I mean, I love all the funniest antics and jokes that he does. I mean, considering that they went for some pop culture references here and there. Even also adds a nod to uh, all of his previous films. So, there you go. So, it was really fun. And also to know that, um, yes... It was pretty uh, uncomfortable when he had to spend eight hours in the makeup room, you know, trying to put up all this uh, makeup. You know, like they had to dilate his uh, eyes to, to green. They had to, um, you know, put up uh, all the paint that and all these um, all these sculptures to to make the the head and and the body. I mean, I can see how uncomfortable it was going to become. That, um, yeah, even the dentures, too, with ears, wigs, uh, and all of that. Yeah, just to make him look as grinchy as possible. But then, um, this is where he, he almost started to cause chaos himself. That um, he later got a Zen master. And he also got a CIA operative, yes, a CIA operative, to calm himself down. Because he almost quit this movie. He almost did. So, I'm glad he didn't, because if he did, then they would have given it to someone else. So, and I bet he apologized after that, and he sure did. And by the way, the, the makeup artist is not other than Rick Baker, you know, the legendary 
a makeup artist who's been known for doing a lot of stuff. And he did um, Star Trek, as well as Star Trek The Next Generation, all those other movies that he's been doing, like American Werewolf in London, um, so on and so forth. And yes, he also did the movie Enchanted, where he did the makeup for for um, the old hag. I forgot to mention that in the review. But yes, Rick Baker actually did create that. You know, for Susan Sarandon. And so it really shows that there is practical effects that's not done in CGI. Um, also, um, they also had a mix of practical effects, so everything was done practically, you know, with with all the art design that they had to create. They actually did this at Universal Studios, and you know, right behind the the Bates Motel. And yes, I saw that. I mean, when I when I took a brief tour over there, it was really cool to see what the sets looked like. So that's how they built the uh, Whoville and the rest of the mountains and everything. So that, this was really cool. And they had all the actors and all the stunt people and everyone just dressed up wearing all these costumes. And they had to use all, all the dentures, ears and wigs and try to make them look like actual hooves. So that's how they put them together for all the actors. So it's, it's amazing. All the body languages that they move and also they a mix with CGI was where they added the uh, the tiny who's and then all these uh, dream sequences where they have to pick out uh, all these uh, gifts and stuff or or any others. So it has a mix of that, or even the scene where they even show uh, the Grinch's teeth and it's filled with uh, all these um, termites. Yep, CGI right there, and, and then some of the effects of, of the movements here and there. Uh, but it's there. No, it's all there. Yeah, for... Because the budget of the film was only $123 million, so this was huge. But it was a huge box office smash, earning $345.1 million. That was huge back then. Think about that. This was a big production. I mean, coming from um, the entire team, uh, they had a wonderful score by uh, James Horner, God Rest His Soul. I mean, he was definitely a terrific composer. I love all the music scores that really fits the tone. I love the cinematography that's done by Don Peterman. He did a very fascinating job using all these tilted shots and uh, uh, the fuse uh, camera angle lenses that he did, you know, moving it around here and there. I mean, I can see why it does have that hazy look. So, that was the whole point. It's supposed to look that way. I guess people just didn't seem to realize it. I mean, because everyone had seen this movie many times, and they just didn't think about it. Um, it was also edited uh, together by Dan Hanley and Mike Hill, so the editing was uh, superb. I mean, shot after shot here and there around just really uh, brings the timing together. Yeah, because they, they put out a lot of timing to, to actually go pretty fast for its running time. Um, um, and besides Jim Carrey, who's very excellent once again, um, I thought Taylor Momsen was very cute as Cindy Lou. This was her screen debut. And it was great to see, you know, that this movie did focus on her character, trying to discover who the Grinch is, and um, trying to find out the backstory behind them. And I didn't mind the backstory because I thought it was really cool to see how we begin to focus on the characters more about what was it like. I mean, I almost wish we had known all the Who's and know about the backstory of, of the Grinch because otherwise, well, it, it will just end up being just like the 25-minute uh, holiday special. But that's okay. 
Um, the fact is, this is a movie adaptation, so don't expect it to be you know, Citizen Kane or something. And it's not. And that's the way they're treating this movie, and that just pisses me off. Um, so I know, I know, I'm sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself here. Um, also to note that, yes, the, the movie did got nominated for Best uh, Makeup, Best Art Direction, and Best Costume Design for the Academy Awards. Uh, so Rick Baker and Gail Rowan Ryan, they both won. Yeah, Gail also uh, worked together with Rick to create uh, everything. Of course, um, the Golden Globe did nominate Jim Carrey for the role. He actually won the Kids' Choice Awards and the, Mo the MTV Movie Awards, so that was really cool. But it gets nominated for Ratsies, which is stupid. Yeah, worst remake of sequel and worst screenplay by Jeffrey Price and Peter S. Seaman. I'm sorry, that's just stupid. And never trust the Ratsies. They're full of shit, <laughs> and they're not funny either. Um, the Saturn Awards, though, um, yeah, um, only won two awards uh, for Best Music and Best Makeup. Um, the rest were nominated. So either way, um, I think this was pretty interesting. And um, I kind of like the fact that, uh, the, that Jim Carrey did provide something a bit... Not not quite like Boris Koloff here, but he started to sound a little bit like uh, Sean Connery blending with other actors. But of course, he does use his uh, <laughs> his um, persona um, to to mix in for for his character. I mean, yeah. So he tends to go uh, Jim Carrey esque. I mean, all all these memorable scenes, like where he was trying to. <laughs> Like he was acting like, you know, he's a director and, and he's trying to, you know, trying to give some, <laughs> in that one scene where, yeah, you know, he was trying to improvise uh, uh, Max, you know, who's dressed up as a reindeer that he had to make for him. So that way he can go all the way down to, with the sleigh so he can move around. <sighs> that, was, that was a pretty funny moment. Or where he was trying to um, get rid of all this noise that he just can't stand with this Christmas music that he decided to use that giant monkey and starts to, starts to hit uh, the Grinch's head and all that. Or any other. So, you know, I mean, throughout his entire layer, he just goes around doing all of his funny antics. And that, that just makes it hilarious. Uh, back to all the other actors, um, I thought uh, Christine Berensky was uh, very beautiful, and didn't mind the cast of Bill Irwin, Molly Shannon, Jeffrey Tambor, uh, Clint Howard, of course an early role of Bryce Dallas Howard, who plays a surprise who. Um, I think it's a small role, so I know this is going to be uh, pretty tough. And I, I know Caroline Williams is in this, so I think she has a small role as well. And you got all these other actors joining in. And Anthony Hopkins as a narrator, you know, just like Boris Koloff was. But Anthony Hopkins did a great job narrating it, so there are times where you begin to picture uh, Hannibal Lecter <laughs> you know, coming with this uh, narration here. <laughs> but there you go. Um, and yes, it does have a soundtrack, um, which has the song uh, Green Christmas by Bare Naked Ladies. Um, also had the song Better Do It Right by Smash Mouth. Yeah, the Grinch 2000 by Buster Rhymes and Jim Carrey. Yeah, even Jim Carrey sings the, the song. Uh, Christmas Going to the Dogs by The Eels. Of course, Taylor Momsen even sings the song that Faith Hill would later sing. And 
<coughs> in stink. Yes, in sync. Oh god, I hate those assholes. That, that shitty boy band. Well, luckily I, I didn't hear the song in the movie. So I think this was only in the soundtrack. I don't think they ever did play that anyway. So thank goodness for that. But the song was called You Don't Have to Be Alone. Why do I care? <laughs> um, so don't worry about that. That That's not in the movie. So we don't have to deal with that shit. It's a fun film. Not to take itself so seriously. It's what it is. And I enjoyed it. So, to me, I, I highly recommend it. I mean, even if you love the holiday special and the book, then who knows? But hey, you know, I guess you just have to have your own opinion to think about it. So. Um, also, to note that yes, Ron Howard did a wonderful job directing this movie, so it's good to know. Because he's been known for directing films like Willow, uh, as well as um, Ransom, Backdraft, uh, and many others in his career. So. But he definitely knows how to direct comedies too, uh, besides dramas and thrillers, and even fantasies too. So, he yeah, had fun. So, there you go. That's How the Grinch Stole Christmas, or simply known as The Grinch. And I give the movie five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and have a happy and safe Christmas. And I'll see you later. Bye.